The impression of the first photographs of the James Webb Telescope can be summarized as, I wasn't able to understand anything, but it was fun. The pictures are stunning and the graphics are impressive. But what's the point of all that? Well, make yourselves comfortable, friends, because we will sort everything out in the next couple of minutes. We'll start with the most beautiful photo of Carina Nebula, according to us. What is a nebula? Nebula accompanies the stars at both ends of their lives. Stars are born from clouds of cosmic dust and gas, or they die as supernova, emitting this dust and gas. The Carina Nebula is where both of these processes are actively taking place. It is located 7,500 light years from Earth in the constellation Carina. The object is very convenient for studying because the nebula is enormous. In the night sky, it occupies four times the size of the Sun. However, it can only be seen from the southern hemisphere. Fortunately, the James Webb Telescope is in space and is exempt from such conditions. Before we analyze the photo, let us note some crucial facts. First, the Carina Nebula has already been photographed by telescopes other than Hubble. NASA deliberately chose a comparison with its predecessor to make the difference clear. But look for example at the Nebula image through the Vista telescope lens. Impressive, isn't it? The footage from the Gemini South Telescope is no less spectacular. It would be unfair to say that thanks to the James Webb Telescope, we got beautiful desktop wallpapers. The Carina Nebula has already been studied pretty successfully. The benefits of the James Webb Telescope are not primarily in the beautiful picture. What are precisely its benefits? First, let's take a look at the photo. In front of us is a star-forming region called NGC 3324, specifically its outermost part. NGC 3324 is part of the Great Carina Nebula. For the astronomers, this area is also known as the Cosmic Cliffs. The tallest rocks in this image are about seven light years high almost twice the distance from the Sun to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. However, unlike our stellar neighbor, hundreds and thousands of stars are at such distances. Some are located unbelievably close to each other. If our Sun was among these stars, then at night it would be almost as bright as during the day, since there are too many stars around. The brown fog in the photo is a hot ionized gas, with a temperature of about 10,000 degrees Celsius which inexorably blows into space under the influence of the powerful radiation from young stars. In fact, there is no more gas at the top of the image already. The thing is that in the area above the photo, which is not shot, there are even more hot young stars. They seem to blow out all the gas with their stellar wind and intense ultraviolet flux. Gas velocities in such nebula usually reach 20 to 30 kilometers per second. Everything seems static because of the massive scale of what is happening to an observer from Earth. Also, the so-called protostellar jets are visible in the photo. These are jets of hot gas that eject accretion disks around newborn stars. Their origin and nature are a mystery to scientists. This is where James Webb's wonder waffles come into play. The NIRCAM instrument can look through gas and dust and see objects behind them. It's like a dog barking behind a wall. You don't see it. But thanks to the barking, you know it's there. So the infrared instruments of James Webb catch waves that are not visible in the optical spectrum. But unlike the case with the dog, the telescope also makes a detailed image. Tiny red dots in the dark, dusty region of the image are unborn stars in the very early stages of formation. Only the incredible sensitivity of James Webb's sensors helped us see what stars looked like in their infancy. Previously, because of the impenetrable wall of dust, we could hardly admire it. In essence, this is the main focus of modern astrophysics research. While the formation of large stars is well studied, small stars with their jets, cosmic winds, and dust emissions are not really that much investigated. How much gas is needed for a certain number of stars to be born? Why do stars form with a certain mass? How much do the stellar winds of giant stars affect the gas in a nebula? Scientists will be looking for answers to all these questions and all thanks to the James Webb Telescope that has a Byakugan that can see through obstacles. The second photo shared by the telescope team is also a nebula, but from the other end of a star's life cycle. In the first photo, we discuss the Space Maternity Hospital, and here we have a cemetery with one grave, quite a beautiful one. The Southern Ring Nebula, also known as the Eight Burst Nebula, or NGC 3132, is the stunning aftermath of the death of a star 2,500 light-years away from Earth. 
The bubble in the photo is about one light year in diameter. Such nebula are called planetary nebula, but they're not about the formation of planets. Instead, it's about a star that, in the final stages of its life, runs out of fuel and begins to eject matter into space. Then, as it shrinks and turns into a white dwarf, it gives away enormous amounts of radiation, illuminating this matter. This is how we see a similar post-apocalyptic spectacle. Each of the shells, which differ in color, symbolizes a different ejection stage. The farther away from the center, the earlier the ejection. The layers closest to the star are the later ejections. Scientists will study their boundaries thanks to the new images. But there's a tricky part. If you switch from the tool near cam, which we have already told you about, to Miri, working in the mid-infrared, we see that there are, in fact, two stars. The fainter one threw out all the matter. The brighter one is still active today. Scientists knew about that even before James Webb's photographs. However, thanks to the telescope, we could see that the second star, which had not yet exploded, was also surrounded by dust for the first time in history. This could also mean that it, too, could explode shortly and make this planetary nebula even more beautiful. What is interesting about this nebula? First, it's interesting because something like this will happen to our sun someday. That's why it would be great to know what stellar emissions consist of, how this process proceeds, and why, in the case of this particular pair, everything looks so asymmetric. Scientists are not running out of time, due to their vast scale. The formation of such planetary nebula is like watching a movie in ultra-slow motion. The process can take tens of thousands of years, so there's no hurry. And finally, here's a fun fact. Most of the colored dots in this background photo are not stars, but whole galaxies. That speaks about the accuracy and strength of James Webb's sensors. Let's move on to the third picture. This is probably the most spectacular image in terms of structure. The Stephens Quintet photo has 150 million pixels and mosaic data from a thousand images. No wonder, we're talking about a group of five galaxies at once in the constellation Pegasus. Four of them are in constant interaction, and the fifth, in the photo below, is far from the rest. It is only 40 million light years from Earth, while up to the four in the background, about 290 million. The mutual influence of these galaxies on each other turns on scientists the most. Take a look, for example, at the shock wave that is visible between the two closest galaxies. It falls on the lower galaxy at a speed of millions of kilometers per hour. Similar to the Carina Nebula, which we discussed earlier, such matter influx increases the pressure. Consequently, they trigger the mechanism for forming new stars, which is just one example of how colliding galaxies affect each other. Moreover, this image stores a previously unseen level of detail about the workings of the supermassive black hole. The topmost galaxy in the photo is NGC 7319. Its core is active and contains a supermassive black hole with 24 million solar masses. The black hole actively absorbs material and, as a result, puts out light energy equivalent to 40 billion suns. Impressive, isn't it? That's largely why the core of the uppermost galaxy is almost blindingly white. Scientists were ecstatic with James Webb's other instrument, the near-spec spectrograph. You and I can't see the results in this photo. However, scientists used it to get detailed data about the composition and processes in the core of this galaxy. The closest analogy is an MRI. The James Webb Telescope gives or takes similar data about galactic nuclei and black hole activity for astrophysicists. Why is all this necessary? Scientists are actively studying the Stephens Quintet because it is as similar as possible to what's happening in the universe in the early stages of its life. Galaxies were close. Supermassive black holes beat energy in all directions. And shock waves from constant collisions triggered the birth of new stars. It's not like the James Webb Telescope somehow completely revolutionized our understanding of the process but it gave scientists the most accurate data about everything inside this image. As a result, hundreds of galaxies lit up again in the background. The star catalogs will get thicker over the telescope's lifetime. Let's move on to the fourth photo, which is not a photograph. It would be naive to expect that such an advanced telescope as James Webb will give us a 4K image of a planet 1,000 light years away, right? But in the best tradition of Jack Sparrow, the telescope produced something better instead of an image. Detailed information about the atmosphere of exoplanet WASP-96b. 
it is 1100 light years from us, and the planet is, to put it mildly, unusual. Its mass is half that of Jupiter, and its diameter is slightly larger. The exoplanet rotates incredibly close to its star, at a distance nine times less from Mercury to the Sun. A year on this planet lasts only three and a half Earth days, which is a fascinating object to study. Exoplanets are easiest to study in an old-fashioned way, by looking at them during the passage through the star's disk. Interruptions begin in the data coming from it at this moment. The brightness becomes a little less, and the radiation slightly changes, because some parts of the star's diameter for an observer from Earth is obscured by the planet, so they spot and later study similar celestial bodies. This happens the same way as the police study the fingerprints of criminals. Various atoms and molecules also leave traces in the waves they absorb and emit. So catching such waves, a sufficiently sensitive instrument can tell whether the wave passed through water, carbon, or something else. James Webb is a sensitive instrument. After six hours of observing the planet WASP-96b passing through the disk of its star, it collected a whole spectrogram of the composition of its atmosphere. Oxygen, methane, and carbon dioxide in the exoplanet's atmosphere did not particularly light up. However, quite suddenly, there was an unambiguous signature of water, signs of the presence of haze and clouds, which no telescope that had previously studied the exoplanet could find. It is not likely that this particular exoplanet was important. The published data instead serves as a demonstration of the monstrous capabilities of the James Webb Telescope. Its sensors are so sensitive that they can distinguish the slightest changes in brightness. Specifically, the Nyrus is able to detect color differences of only about one thousandth of a micron. The difference between yellow and red, for example, is fifty thousandths. The published data on the WASP-96b is a test drive of what awaits us in the future. About a quarter of the time, the James Webb Telescope will be devoted to exoplanets, among which there will be rocky worlds similar to Earth. Methane and other gases indicating the presence of life, James Webb can also easily detect. Some scientists even bet that already in the first months of operation, the telescope will provide irrefutable evidence of the existence of conditions for life on one of the exoplanets. But that will be later. For now, we'll talk about background photos. The first, presented by President Biden, contains the most detailed look into the universe's past. The light from the most distant galaxy's picture took 13.1 billion years to reach us. That is, we see this galaxy as it was almost immediately after the Big Bang. Most importantly, along with the photograph, the telescope gave scientists spectrograph data, telling us about the composition of this galaxy by compiling a detailed diagram. Pause for a moment and think about the enormity for a second. Just now, the telescope had taken and shared a detailed description of the composition of a galaxy that produced light over 13 billion years ago, when neither the Sun nor the Earth existed. Also, the James Webb Telescope team shared calibration frames. They were used to work with Jupiter. Humanity has plenty of detailed photos of the gas giant that will not surprise anyone. However, one can be surprised by how clearly and quickly James Webb's cameras track such a large and relatively fast-moving object. According to NASA, the calibration data on Jupiter was even better than predicted, so the James Webb Telescope is fully functional. Finally, we'll answer the most frequently asked question. Many people complain that James Webb's photographs did not impress them. There are reasons for this, because we have already photographed all the objects that James Webb showed us with other telescopes. The difference in quality is visible, but it did not look like a revolution. This is true, but this is not the point of the new telescope. The footage that Hubble shoots in 10 days takes James Webb 12 hours. For three decades of work, Hubble has studied about a couple of percent of the starry sky. The increased speed of the new telescope will allow you to dive into the unknown much faster and cover more unknown areas. The second feature of James Webb is purely scientific data. The telescope's main power is in the spectrum analysis. If NASA had published thousands of pages of dry text instead of beautiful pictures, ordinary people would definitely not be impressed. So they decided to do it easier and try to show the advantages of the telescope to the public. Do you have any other questions about our first pictures in the telescope? Feel free to ask them in the comments and we'll be happy to answer them all. Dear friends, that's all for now. See you soon.